thank you, Inti, for the invitation. Actually, for me, this is apparently the third time already. Um, this time is a uh, different uh, capacity. I'm uh, representing on presenting uh, on behalf of Ronald Wall, who unfortunately cannot be here. Um, the focus of the presentation is to um, look at the issue of uh, transition towards uh, green economy um, and complementary regional development. Um, this is a topic not only facing China, it's facing us all, also in Holland. Um, as the world is moving towards more bio-based economy, more resource efficient, uh, looking for business models, transferring from more traditional business in industry into, let's say, green industry. Um, so in my presentation, I will look at both the, uh, a Dutch uh, metropole, Delta metropole perspective, and uh, uh, the Po River Delta as a big metropole perspective. So. Okay. Um, Stephen has, uh, in the morning presentation, has explained the process of uh, urbanization in the last uh, essentially 100 years. And one of the most important, uh, let's say, exemplification of globalization is uh, trade and investment. Um, so increasingly, the world is, uh, we are living in increasingly interconnected and interdependent world, um, characterized by these large networks of people, of cities, of nations. Um, and trade and investment is uh, one of if not the most important channels of interaction between uh, regions and cities. So especially in terms of uh, uh, FDI, um, that has overtaken trade in the last uh, years to be accounting for most of the global GDP. And if you look at the, the global distribution power, increasingly this uh, uh, power, let's say, are consolidated by the large few and they control, let's say, more than 50% of uh, global GDP. Right. Um, in terms of uh, earlier, we also hear uh, Marianne talk about Yeji accomplishment, and increasingly that, uh, of course, more and more, that attracting investment is the top Yeji uh, for local uh, city leaders. So um, if you look at, for example, the, uh, of course, we were comparing earlier, I heard the comparison between Almera and Shenzhen, that Shenzhen grew from 300,000 people to 16 million versus Almera is from 30,000 to 100, also in 30 years. Um, in some ways, this may be a too easy a comparison because Shenzhen happens in a very uh, unique, let's say, political, economical times uh, that may happen only once in a lifetime. So um, many nowadays, uh, new cities are popping out of the ground like uh, bamboo shoots uh, after rain. So just you count the number of uh, new towns or eco cities, my shop worked in several of them, um, hundreds of them, um, also along the port of the Delta. And they all face the same issue of uh, uh, I planning 20 years, grand master plan, uh, 200 people now, 1,000 people now, 2 million in 20 years. Uh, why not Shenzhen happened? Uh, why not it can happen for other cities? Yes, why not? It can happen. But um, increasingly, of course, it's issue of competition uh, for resources, for national policy, approval from central government, and also the investment uh, industry is uh, increasingly fierce. So this uh, issue for competitiveness for cities, not just a city, but also considering what my presentation will focus on, is how the complementarity among cities will become increasingly important. So competitiveness is no longer, uh, should no longer be an issue confining to a city, um, but you look at the package of, uh, uh, of competitiveness as a region. I'll skip this. So if you look at the uh, importance of why FDI is an important measure for, for uh, development, of course it brings with FDI, you bring capital, but increasingly, issue of knowledge is, uh, 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 the, let's say, more and more driving innovation. If you look at the uh, development policy for European Union, uh, the free movement of knowledge workers, development of knowledge networks, uh, information flows, and also um, collaboration, knowledge-based collaboration in research development is uh, increasingly 
more and more uh, recognized as the top agenda for eLocal innovations. So the issue of FDI bringing knowledge, which is also the center of the discussion, is how to bring, develop knowledge-intensive investment into also facilitating uh, regional urban development. I have uh, uh, two cases. One is uh, first to look at the, the uh, developing this Dutch uh, Delta Knowledge Cluster with zooming into particular city uh, regions in South Holland. Um, the, this is an uh, analysis done by uh, Ronald and with uh, Martijn Berger, um, which oh, it did happen. So it analyzed uh, data in the last ten, 10 years of investment in the whole European region. Um, it it's kind of framework to uh, more or less the direction of a data-driven policy making to look at trends and what that trend will mean for the future development. So some of the results are... Okay. This one. Some facts first. Um, if you look at the case of South Holland, where Rotterdam is uh, based for uh, GDP growth, South Holland is one of the most heavyweight uh, one of the important region uh, in uh, Holland. Um, but in terms of international competitiveness, South Holland is actually not very strong. I think it's uh, located, uh, it should be red, the yellow. <laughs> I don't see it. Well, it's very part of, uh <laughs> I don't see those images. Um, it's one of the uh, much lower in the, not in the top 10. And uh, also in terms of, uh, right, this is what it shows, yeah. Um, in terms of position in the national networks, South Holland is number 26 um, and ranking way behind uh, London. If you look at the global cities, then no doubt London, New York, that is the real global cities. And of course, France, Madrid, these are the top uh, nodes, let's say, that the power uh, centers for uh, investment. Um, Looking at the more a uh, spatial representation of that uh, ranking, you see that uh, this exhibits a, a very cl uh, clear power structure of cities. A few uh, super centers controlling the resources. They are uh, powerful in receiving, but also very powerful in sending out investment. Um, and looking at the time series, South Holland is the pink line, very low. So over the years, it's uh, been stable in uh, 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 attracting investment, FDI, not again very comparable to uh, the larger l other European centers. Of course, due to the financial crisis, you see European cities are had a quite a, a nose dive in the last uh, years. Now, looking at the current, uh, let's say, industry stronghold, uh, of course, South Holland in terms of petrochemicals because of the port in Rotterdam strong is still the, let's say, the most uh, industry heavyweight. It is quite high ranked in Europe. Uh, number four comes after uh, Germany and uh, also uh, um, Spain. If you look at, the, again, the spatial representation, this is a uh, stable network. Uh, few centers of uh, uh, this uh, super city control resources and uh, um, the network is quite stable over the years. But if you look at alternative energy, which is where the transition towards green economy need to happen, and more this kind of a new uh, investment need to happen, then South Holland is actually not very strong. The yellow bar shows it's again after the number 10 position. But if you look at the network, um, this is a very dynamic network. Uh, the power center is not clearly defined. You have new players. Uh, like in Spain, that's a Catalonia is actually is one of the, the top in destination for investment. Um, but same time, a lot of interaction are happening between cities of that traditionally not in the power circle. So the new type of industry, new type of business model is also disrupting, let's say, the city power uh, positions. Um, different, this is complicated, but just shows in terms of different uh, sector, here we looked at the alternative energy, petrochemical, more traditional, but also food. Different uh, industry will also require different type of uh, uh, location uh, competitiveness factors. I wouldn't look in, go into too much detail. Um, 
For example, in the petrochemical, some of the uh, important issues, of course, the market size, so GDP, um, and also logistic issues. But also, uh, urban is area is not important for petrochemical. They actually need non-urban area because they need place to expand. And also, heavy, heavy industry do not really contribute that much uh, in terms of high-end jobs. So in, so in, in this type of uh, criteria, South Holland rates scores pretty high. But if you look at the, uh, alternative energy, for example, you will see that the urban attractiveness plays a very important factor in attracting investment. And South Holland here actually com scores rather low compared to its regional competitors. Um, as a summary, again, that the, the important uh, factors, some are uh, similar between the traditional industry and then the new industry. For example, market size, uh, also education university. But if you look at alternative, the green energy issue, university for innovation, but local suppliers, so the shorter supply chain, not this large distance spanning global uh, chains, but rather the local chains, and also the urban environment plays a quite important role. And that's actually the kind of industry that will uh, improve, let's say, the urban infrastructure that's needed for urban development. So the question, of course, for the Netherlands, same question we don't have answer for, and the policymakers also don't, <laughs> is um, how do you look at as, uh, not, as not Holland as this is Almera, this is Rotterdam, and this is South Holland, this is Amsterdam, but as Netherlands as a one delta cluster, um, if you look at the investment position, none of the cities in Holland is particularly strong, but as, as overall, if you add Amsterdam with Rotterdam together, in Europe it's quite strong. So instead of thinking about how cities in Holland compete, what other complementary uh, development can happen, especially around this Ransa area. This map shows the petrochemical industry and the alternative uh, industry actually share a lot of uh, um, coinciding location. So, for example, also uh, we look at the uh, innovative food production, Greenport, if you've heard about it, that actually can use very much the existing uh, heavy industry port area. So there's a lot of synergies, not to say we should switch completely to new news or good, Petrol is all polluting, but looking at synergies between the different the existing ones and the new uh, um, development. Um, now look at China. Uh, we also heard China in the past 20 years has been unsustainable and mostly investment-led, FDI-driven. China is, is the biggest uh, receiver for FDI in the past 20 years. And as we go into realizing new China dream, the question is how and also cities need to differentiate much more and more on their own unique factors. Um, the question is how do you attract FDI in a more knowledge intensive uh, manufacturing services, which will lead to a, a more qualitative urban growth pattern. And then the FDI will play a new role. So some, again, some uh, factuals of um, Globally, the, uh, you can see this is a destination for uh, FDI in Asia. Uh, China is the uh, biggest, but increasingly more and more, also the, in Asia, a lot of competition. Um, I, don't, I skipped the one map showing that the investment, if you look at the, the, uh, where the city has the power to invest in others, there are only a handful, it's maybe five to 10 big ones, but destination, many. So meaning the cities are all try to compete for attention, at least in the past 20 years, for a few of the powerful investors. But hundreds of cities are competing for them. And then the, um, the, the location or the competitors are actually converging. So the uniqueness of cities are becoming, well, the universality of uh, Steve was talking about, is also making them more difficult. Um, this picture of Asia, looking at the, if you see the, uh, yellow dots where the clusterings happen. You see that the, uh, in China, the, po the um, Yangtze River Delta, center around Shanghai, is doing very well compared to the Po River Delta and even, let's say, the new Bohai Bay Delta around Beijing. Beij no, there's nothing, not too much happening around the North Delta, let's say. Um, in the South, the Po River Delta is mainly led by Hong Kong and spin off to other regions. And if we further zoom into Po River Delta, um, 
uh, Dorian also had uh, some pictures showing all the cities that are developing. You can see that uh, most of the uh, investment, again, last 20 years, is mostly Hong Kong-led with uh, Shenzhen, using its strategic position on the uh, uh, gateway to the Po River Delta. But this advantage is also uh, diminishing in a way. It also become more diversif diversified. For example, that Guangzhou is developing the new Nansha area, which is a city, new city to be hosting 2.5 million people. Zhongshan is trying to develop also a coastal region. So this embracing the delta, uh, competing for foreign investment, facing Macau, Taiwan, and uh, um, is increasingly fierce. Um, but there's also not a lot of discussion about a Po River Delta strategy. So so far now it's Shanghai competing with uh, with uh, Nansha and competing with uh, uh, Zhongshan. So it's a lot of a competitive competition. But the complementarity issue. Um, need to be also more looked into. Uh, I'll probably skip on with this. This is uh, some. Sh this is more showing that the his a trend of the stronghold. Uh, looking at Hong Kong, for example, the globally, uh, Hong Kong is uh, number top five in global destinations, and Guangzhou is ranked pretty still low. So, um, let's see. Then if you look at Asia, um, sh Shanghai is the uh, number one in Asia, uh, followed then by Singapore and Hong Kong. And in this case, actually, Shenzhen is uh, ranked less than Guangzhou. Suzhou is mistakenly green, so I apologize for that. Um, what is also, of course, uh, interesting is this, this power law distribution, which is a phenomenon for a lot of systems and also for investment, uh, that popular cities become they self-reinforce themselves. They become more popular. So um, it's not so easy to say because investment or people relations, it's evolving system. It don't, doesn't revolute overnight, not because the city built all the right conditions, suddenly they will become also like Hong Kong. Um, this, this system has a tendency to um, self-reinforce themselves. So you can see the basis, the stronger become stronger. Um, it doesn't mean you should not compete with the uh, strongest, but more it means that you should need to think about how to differentiate. For example, if you look at the, um, the green sectors, the most important up-and-coming sectors are the highlight green ones, for example, tourism, uh, communications, the urban industries, food, pharmaceuticals, alternative energy. For Shenzhen, for example, these are currently not very the top investment sector. The stronghold are still uh, in semiconductors, electronics, that's where Shenzhen came from, um, real estate. So to transition into a new uh, industry, it's a, of course, easy slogan to say, but to also looking at who do you compete, who can you complement, of course, that's a, um, um, a much bigger issue. Uh, for Also for, in terms of functions, the in Shenzhen, the most uh, functions are still not on the most let's say, uh, capturing the most value. Not in R&D and also not in development, mostly in manufacturing construction. So the innovation we're seeing from the Shanghai version is good development, but they do not still capture the top part of the global value chain. Um, also then, I think I don't have time, I have uh, some, she's looking at the specifically look at life science, one minute. <laughs> so if I look at the, f uh, particular case of uh, life sciences. Oh, no, I lost. <laughs> okay. Um, making a point to say that the in terms of life science, because it is one example of the kind of green industry um, that uh, need to develop, that can be, for example, uh, uh, very important for Shenzhen. And currently, Guang Hong Kong and Guangzhou are both much stronger in terms of uh, uh, global positions. And in terms of uh, uh, functions, again, Hong Kong is currently the, uh, taking up the most uh, uh, high-end function, for example, in headquarters and R&D services. And in Guangzhou, it's still more the low-end, manufacturing, marketing, and support. So they both already taking up, let's say, the uh, higher segment value chain. Um, the question is for Shenzhen, how do you go from differentiating, same time, knowing where your position are in the global network, 
What is your differentiating uh, competitive advantage, and how do you reinforce that? Uh, I have uh, maybe sheet last sheet to leave as a discussion. Uh, we look at the use this framework to in the second workshop to look at how do you grow from green economy, uh, green policy, and then to green area development. And this Guangming is situated in the valley, the value valley between Hong Kong and Guangzhou. But of course, we can replace maybe Almera in the middle, as next to Amsterdam. Um, the issue is that how do we capture that the um, the um, value or the comp complementarity in the region to be able to climb to a higher value curve? Not to say that. Uh, Shenzhen, or especially Guangming, should be competing for Hong Kong or competing with Guangzhou. But where is the uh, differentiation in terms of specific subsectors and specific functions that will be, let's say, realistic, achievable, and also will help them to move towards, uh, let's say, the knowledge um, uh, intensive development? Thanks. Tiffany, thank you very much. I was hoping you were going to show that slide because that is yeah. really the key question. That was the isn't key question. It? Yes. yes. Have you have you thought of answers to that question um, yourself? Yeah. That uh, we have looked at uh, using the area development uh, case in Guangmi. We didn't show which because the result is pretty preliminary to using this kind of uh, systematic analysis as a framework thinking um, to. Um, in a way to complement more, let's try to plan is more blueprint based, uh, but then to also in a way talking at the same level as the decision maker, what they are concerned about. So in the case of uh, Guangming, last time we looked at the uh, issue of this uh, image of urban attractiveness and translate that into uh, factors, for example, then specifically into the slow uh, system of uh, more pedestrian, so really, what do you mean by attractiveness and green, and in terms of very functional issue of combining with the, right now the high-speed rail more or less represent the value valley because the high-speed rail is the opportunity of development, but just pass through Guangming and connecting Guangzhou and Hong Kong. So how do you, how do you then using, not just let it pass through, but build around it. And so they have to use uh, other kind of a transport system with uh, encouraging pedestrian and also the green path. Um, and so complementing the high-speed rail, so bring that development into, uh, into a local-based development. So that, that was a message quite well received by the leaders because there's something a language speak to their yeji apparently. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, uh, but, and, and, uh, and also presumably you showed them the slides of the map of Europe that drastically changes the minute you start looking at yeah. the green economy. That yes. the complete uh, of the, the economic power structure changes. Yeah. And then you say the main attractors or main factors are urban yeah. attractiveness Could be and one, universities yeah. Yeah. and things like that. And it becomes a completely different argument for yes. sustainable uh, urban development. Yes, and also way. with the issue of China, of course, the next 10 years, this picture might drastically change very much because as Steve already said in the past, uh, now that the, the link, uh, the FDI links especially, is mostly transatlantic, so US, Europe. But China is fast becoming a major investor, yeah. and that will change this picture. So you have, you can't make, on the one hand, you have this past dependency, you have this power law that could be, it's not so easy to change the system. This still takes time. On the other hand, you can also expect new power centers to evolve very rapidly yeah. because of new, completely new development, this kind of disruptive development. Thank you very much. Please take a seat. Uh, uh.